In this video, we're going to look at a baseline version of the binary choice model, namely the loaded model. I'm going to show you the model and uh, we're going to see some code and we're going to run a Monte Carlo study. What is binary choice? Um, binary choice is choice between two alternatives. So we can code this as a variable yi taking on two values. Typically uh, we use zero and one, but it can be anything because in the end of the day, you can always uh, transform uh, these values into um, what is convenient for coding, let's say. Um, so what are such choices? Um, for instance, um, you can think of um, whether or not you attend college, whether or not you smoke, um, whether at a given point in time you're retired, um, whether somebody is healthy, etc. Typical models um, that are used to analyze um, binary choices are um, the probit model, the logit model, which is what we're going to see here in this video in more detail, the linear probability model, semi-parametric binary choice models, and then finally uh, non-parametric binary choice models. And we're going to see uh, many of those, um, not in this video, but uh, in later videos. A direct extension to binary choice is order choice. Order choice is choice uh, where yi takes on more than two values, but they can be ordered and everybody would agree on a particular ordering. Uh, so here think of examples such as the number of firms um, that are in a market, educational choice more generally, uh, so the level of education uh, people choose, um, or satisfaction with life, let's say. What we do here, as I said, is we look at a baseline version of the model, and um, that is part of the family of standard linear index um, binary choice models. And um, later, in a later video, we're going to discuss generalizations. How does the baseline version of the model look like? We have a binary choice, yi, so that will be coded as 0 and 1. And um, it's going to be 1 if, so here we have an indicator function that takes on the value 1 if the condition in curly brackets is true and 0 otherwise, if xi beta is at least as big as epsilon i. xi is a vector of explanatory variables. Beta is a parameter vector that we would like to estimate. And epsilon i can be thought of as individual heterogeneity that is unobserved. The unobserved epsilon is assumed to be distributed independently of xi. And um, since we're going to uh, do maximum likelihood estimation, it's not surprising that we assume that we know the cumulative distribution function of epsilon i. And um, I will talk later about um, how restrictive that is. Um, but um, for now, uh, please recall that the cumulative distribution function is defined as um, the CDF evaluated at e is the probability that the random variable here, epsilon i, is less than or equal than e. Now, as I said, the model is um, this one here. Yi is 1 if xi beta is uh, greater or equal than epsilon. And by definition, the CDF is this one here. So the CDF of epsilon i evaluated at e is the probability that epsilon i is less than or equal than e. So therefore, uh, we have the following. Namely, the probability that yi is equal to 1 given x is equal to the probability that this condition here holds. So the probability that epsilon is less than or equal than xi beta. So once we put in for the e xi beta, we have the probability that epsilon i is less than or equal than uh, xi beta. So this is just equal to um, the CDF of epsilon i evaluated at 
xi beta, which is what I have written down here. Since yi can now only take on two values, 0 and 1, we of course have that the probability that yi is equal to 0, given x, is 1 minus the probability that y is equal to 1, given x. This is all we need to calculate the log likelihood contribution for an observation i. Um, so all we have to do is to pick either um, f of epsilon evaluated at xi beta or 1 minus um, that f um, as the likelihood contribution and to take logs. Um, as we will see on a later slide, uh, we can also um, figure out what the score contributions are. Um, for that, all we have to do is to take the derivative with respect to the parameter value. I told you that uh, here we're going to, uh, in particular, look at the loaded model. And for this, what we have to do is to assume that the distribution of epsilon is logistic. And to be very precise, we're going to assume that the distribution of epsilon is logistic with location parameter mu is equal to zero and scale parameter uh, s equal to one. Um, and then we're going to get the logit model. Why do people um, like this? Well, on the one hand, um, it actually uh, turns out um, that uh, this connects very nicely to um, other models uh, that are important in this uh, course, uh, in particular the multinomial logit model. On the other hand, um, the logistic uh, distribution function has a particularly nice uh, cumulative uh, distribution function. It looks like this. So the CDF of epsilon evaluated at E for the logistic distribution is the exponential function evaluated at e divided by 1 plus the exponential function evaluated at e. And the exponential function is, of course, e uh, to the power um, e, if you like. <laughs> so um, um, this function has a mean of 0 and a variance, it turns out, of pi square over 3. And that is about uh, uh, is approximately equal to 3.2899 and so on. We will come back to that uh, later. That um, uh, will be important once we compare parameter estimates uh, from the loaded model to parameter estimates from other models. Here is a plot of the CDF uh, when it is uh, logistic. Uh, so what you see here is um, that this is a symmetric distribution. Um, the CDF is point symmetric, about zero. Um, you see um, that um, the uh, function goes through uh, zero and 0.5, so the median is um, zero. Um, and uh, since the uh, CDF, the cumulative distribution function, is point symmetric, we do know uh, that the density is going to be axis symmetric, uh, about zero. Using uh, this particular functional form, what we can do is we can write down the log likelihood and uh, score contributions. So um, as I said before, the probability that y is equal to 1 given x is in general uh, equal to uh, the CDF of the distribution of epsilon evaluated at xi beta. So this will be uh, this quantity here for uh, the logit model. Um, and uh, of course, um, the probability that y is equal to zero is then going to be one minus um, uh, this uh, expression here. Using this, what we uh, get immediately is that the log likelihood contribution uh, for um, observation i is the log of one of those two things, right? So either um, this expression here, when y is equal to one, so when y is equal to 1, we only use this expression here, and then 1 minus y is going to be equal to 0. Um, so this is not going to be used. Or um, when y is actually equal to 0, this whole first part um, uh, vanishes because y is equal to 0, and only 
this part here stays. So the likelihood contribution is then uh, one minus uh, this expression here. And here I'm still taking the log. The score contribution I alluded to before is the derivative of this expression here with respect to beta. And um, uh, down there on the slide, you see what you um, get when you do this yourselves. I'm not going to do that here. It's a fairly simple uh, calculation and it's worth doing, but um, uh, the learning experience um, is not so great when I put this into this video. So therefore I decided against that. Now let's program this up in uh, MATLAB. How does the code for this look like? What I'm going to do is to program up a function formally that outputs the negative of the log likelihood and the negative of the score. And I'm going to call this function nll underscore logit. And input arguments are going to be uh, beta. So I'm going to try out different vectors uh, beta and of course the data. The data are the y's, so there's a vector with the y's and a matrix of x's. Um, and in this matrix, um, the um, ith column is going to have um, a row vector. Um, no, the ith row is going to consist of um, the vector xi. This is how it's um, constructed here. Now, you might wonder, why do I um, call this the negative log likelihood? And the explanation is very simple. The explanation is that um, we're going to use numerical optimization. And um, as a convention, um, um, most um, software programs um, have a minimizer built in. So if you want to maximize a function, and in principle, we want to maximize here the likelihood function, what you can do is you just minimize the negative of that function. And that's exactly what we are going to do. And NLL, to be very specific, is the negative average log likelihood. Um, and that corresponds nicely to the asymptotic results. So therefore, I've put it like this here. So in line number four of this uh, little script, um, I'm programming up the probability uh, that uh, y is equal to 1 um, for all the x's at the same time. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not looping um, over uh, observations. No, I do this um, in a, a more compact way, um, observation by observation. And um, the way this is done in MATLAB is um, to use this little dot um, in front of the uh, division operator. Um, so uh, what this does is it first calculates um, this quantity um, for all um, elements, um, well, for all... Uh, uh, so first it, it calculates this, this quantity here, x times beta, okay? x times beta is going to give us um, a vector uh, that is um, n uh, long and... Um, and, and, and corresponds to, to the yi, okay? Uh, so uh, in terms of dimension, uh, co corresponds to the y's uh, in, in terms of dimension. So y um, is a vector that is n long uh, and has the yi for each uh, uh, observation, observation i in it. And here we're going to calculate xi beta for each observation, and then it's just stacked on top of one another. Um, we um, apply the exponential function to this. So this stays still uh, n by 1. Okay, then um, we do the same thing uh, for this quantity here. So it's the exact same expression plus 1. And then we uh, divide this element-wise. So I have a uh, n by 1 vector that I divide element-wise by a n by 1 vector. So what I'm getting is an object that is again n by 1. So I'm getting here a vector that contains for each observation i the probability that y is equal to 1. And there's also what I've written here, the probability to choose y is equal to 1. Then um, the log likelihood contribution is exactly uh, the, the formula I had on the previous slide 
translated um, you know to this context here so i'm taking the log and then uh, y times the probability that y is equal to one plus one minus y times the probability that y is um, equal to zero and i do this again element wise uh, so observe the dot here and observe the dot here and for the score i'm doing something uh, that also corresponds to the expression i'm programming up the expression that was on the previous slide good um, finally, what I do in uh, line 8 is I'm taking the negative of the average of the log like weird contributions and in line 9 I'm taking the negative of uh, the average score contribution. Equipped with this, I can almost uh, uh, already run my uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation. So um, let's uh, pick a setup. Uh, so what I've done here is I've said, okay, um, uh, xi um, will have a negative effect on the probability that y is equal to one. Um, so what I need is um, a negative beta uh, for that. Um, I'm drawing xi from a chi-square distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. Um, and I'm saying, okay, y is equal to one if minus 0.1 times xi is greater or equal to epsilon i and i'm now constructing epsilon i in a particular way and um, at this point um, this um, seems overly complicated but it will make much more sense um, later when you have seen more of this course so i'm generating it as the difference between two epsilons epsilon 0 i and epsilon 1 i and these two epsilons uh, will be are drawn respectively from a type 1 extreme value distribution. And in the background, there's a result um, that we will use a lot later, which is that um, the difference um, between two type 1 extreme value distributed random variables is going to be uh, following the logistic distribution. So it all makes sense um, right now. It just looks a little bit complicated. Um, and we will see why it's actually nice to do it like this. Good, um, so thereby I'm generating my observations yi, and um, then I'm running a Monte Carlo with a thousand replications, um, and each time I'm generating data for a hundred observations. Okay, so I generate data by drawing x's, I by drawing epsilons, then I'm constructing my y's, then I'm estimating my parameters. I do this a thousand times, so I'm gonna end up with a thousand estimates of my parameters. And this is a very, very simple model um, because um, there's actually no intercept um, and uh, xi beta is really just a scalar xi times beta. Now I still have to um, program this all up. So how does that work? I'm starting by, um, you know, clearing up my workspace then um, I'm setting n to 100, there's a parameter. I'm setting beta to minus 0.1. Uh, then I have to um, set some parameters for the optimization. So I'm setting the starting values to uh, a scalar zero. Um, so this is scalar, just a zero, because I'm gonna estimate only one parameter. And I'm setting my options like this. I'm using this function optim set and then I'm saying, don't display me any output. So display off. And then I'm saying, I'm supplying actually the derivative of the objective function. How am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that uh, by having it as an output element uh, to the function that I'm optimizing and um, uh, that we actually already have done, um, have already done uh, because we have programmed up um, the negative of the average score. And that is exactly that derivative that is the gradient of the objective function. Then I'm setting um, another parameter, the number of repetitions to a thousand, and I'm initializing um, four objects into which I will write um, uh, for each repetition um, what is basically coming out. So, and these objects are my estimate of beta, beta hat, 
um, the negative log likelihood at the optimum at this value of beta hat, the negative score um, at this uh, value of beta hat, and the negative hessian. And the negative hessian I can use um, to um, obtain standard errors. And um, some of this will be done by you actually in a problem set. So you're going to follow up on this. And now I'm finally running the Monte Carlo. So what I'm doing here is I'm programming up a for loop. Um, I'm doing this um, one after the other. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm looping over i. i runs from 1 up to the number of repetitions or replications. Um, and then each time I'm doing all this stuff here. So line um, 4 up to uh, 10. So what am I, uh, what am I doing? I'm drawing my axis. So here what you see is I'm drawing a vector x from a chi-square distribution with 10 degrees of freedom and the dimension uh, is n by 1. Okay, n is the number of observations. Then I'm drawing these two epsilons. So here I'm using this code here. Um, so this is just a given. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, what is important is that there's a minus here. Um, so uh, uh, there is no particular um, intuitive reason for that. This is just the way it's implemented in MATLAB. Um, so extreme value, um, random draws. Um, again, we have uh, two parameters, no, 0 and 1. So that's a location and scale parameter of the distribution. Important here is, um, again, the dimension, uh, like two vectors, n by 1. Okay, And then here I'm generating the epsilon as the difference between those two. And here I'm writing actually that the difference between two type 1 extreme value variables is um, following the logistic distribution. Once I've done all that, I have my beta anyway. Um, I have my epsilon. I have my x. So I can generate my y. This is what I'm doing here. I say y is equal to and then, you know, I'm, I don't even have to program this uh, indicator function. This is the way you can program this in MATLAB is equal to. And here you have a logical condition. And if this one is true, then it will be coded as a 1. And otherwise, it will be coded as a 0. And um, what we have here is beta times x is bigger than epsilon. Um, the model uh, has actually a greater or equal. But uh, since epsilon is continuously distributed, Greater or equal and equal uh, and greater um, lead to the same uh, probability. So in practice, this does not matter. That's a probability zero event. Uh, so you can forget about that. Good. Um, the next two lines are actually maybe the most important ones for you um, to uh, look at in more detail. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm setting up uh, the optimization by uh, defining the objective function. And I'm then um, doing it here in 10. Okay, so I'm saying um, please define uh, this object here, which I call obje fun, objective function, uh, by taking this function nll logit that I've programmed up separately um, and evaluate it at argument b and take as fixed uh, as input y and x and y and x is the data so you're not going to optimize over all function arguments you're not going to optimize over the data you're going to optimize over uh, the parameters and this is how you uh, communicate this to matlab and here i've written define the objective function with scalar b as the argument and uh, just to be very clear um, so this function is called nll logit so what MATLAB is going to do is it's going to look for a file in the same directory with the name nlllogit, um, and that file contains the code that you have seen on the previous slide, where I showed you um, uh, the uh, actual uh, contents uh, of, that, of that file. So this is done in uh, line 9, and in line 10, um, what we do is the actual optimization. So um, we do that by um, using a, a numerical optimization uh, routine. Here, for instance, uh, we use uh, the one that is called fminunc, 
Anke is, is for unconstrained optimization. We don't have any constraints on the parameters. We just look for the optimum. Um, uh, the first argument is um, what we are optimizing. Then we put the start values and then we put the options that we have defined um, before. And again, this is minimizing the objective function. And for that reason, we've programmed up the negative of the log likelihood function, the negative of the average log likelihood function uh, to be precise. What are the output arguments? Um, you can read this up also um, in the documentation. The first one is um, the arc min. The second one is the function value. Um, the next two are not important for us. Um, and then uh, we get the first derivative and then we get um, the uh, matrix uh, with the second derivatives. Uh, so first and second derivative. Um, and this is all written into these um, uh, objects uh, that we've initialized before. Um, so these are all scalars. And this a very simple example here. Um, and for that reason, um, I'm just putting the i here. Now, um, and this is actually already the end of uh, uh, like uh, uh, this video here. Um, the end is uh, consisting of uh, the result of this uh, Monte Carlo. So if you if you run this yourselves, um, then you will see that um, the average um, estimate we do get is very close actually to uh, the true value. Uh, so the estimator appears to be consistent and um, the variance um, turns out to be um, very small, 0. 0.0006. And in the problem set, we're gonna uh, do a little uh, follow up to all this um, to look at it in more detail. So yeah, as I said, uh, this is already um, uh, the baseline uh, binary choice model. Um, we have discussed it um, uh, for the logit case. And um, uh, here I've shown you how to run a little Monte Carlo. And um, in the following um, videos, we're going to build on that.